New this morning, the Bear County Sheriff's Office says a woman is in serious condition following a late night crash that also involved an off duty Bear County deputy. It happened near the intersection of FM 1346 and Loop 1604 just before 10 last night. BCSO says the deputy was in his personal vehicle on the way to work when he and the woman in another vehicle collided head on. We're told the deputy had minor injuries. However, the woman was found unconscious and was taken to a hospital. The sheriff's office says a preliminary report shows that the woman was driving on the wrong side of the road at the time of the crash. Well, Steph's right. More school districts returning to class today. That includes SAISD and Medina Valley ISD. Sarah Costa will join us live coming up at 5 a.m. from SAISD with a look at their first big day of school. And as students return to the classroom, school safety is still a big concern for many parents and educators. The Texas Education Agency Commissioner Mike Morath says districts are taking several steps to protect students, including limited access for visitors. There is also additional safety and security training for staff that includes the creation of threat assessment teams on every campus. Now, those teams are trained to evaluate the threats and come up with appropriate case management strategies. We, public education, have literally checked every single exterior door of every single facility in the state of Texas, make sure that they close and they lock and they perform properly. Schools all over the state of Texas are reevaluating their access control procedures. And Marath explained while some of these protocols were already in place at some schools, there has been a lack of consistent execution across the state. Meanwhile, the TEA is in the process of filling, filling a new governor ordered position called the Chief of School Safety and Security. The issue of abortion is playing out in state legislatures and courts and on referendums on ballots following the overturning of Roe versus Wade. ABC's M. Wynn has more from Washington. At least 15 states have ceased nearly all abortion services. We pray that the life of the unborn be preserved and protected. Indiana lawmakers were the first in the nation to pass a bill restricting access to abortion since the U.S. Supreme Court overturned Roe v. Wade. Republican Governor Eric Holcomb quickly signed it into law. That is tended to be more pushback against those kind of initiatives, those kind of bills, than about something that, that tries to, to strike something off a middle ground. That was a loss for abortion rights advocates, but they've also had a few wins. A state judge in Wyoming blocked the trigger ban because it was too unclear. The Supreme Court in Montana temporarily stopped further abortion restrictions, including a law that would have banned the procedure after 20 weeks of pregnancy. And in the first state to give the public a chance to weigh in on abortion rights through a referendum, Kansas overwhelmingly voted to protect a woman's right to choose. Women from other states flocking there for reproductive care. It's just really disheartening that I can't do something like this in, in my hometown, um, that I have to travel, that I'm, I'm not trusted to make decisions for my own body, especially ones that, you know, me and my husband made together. Looking ahead to November, abortion measures will be on the ballot in at least four other states. California Kentucky, Montana, and Vermont. Michigan may also add a ballot initiative. M. Wynn, ABC News, Washington. North of Austin, police investigating reports of some possibly rigged explosives at a home in Round Rock. Authorities called to the scene where a man had possibly barricaded himself inside a house yesterday. Neighbors were evacuated as a precaution. However, police say a man was found unresponsive with no signs of physical trauma. He was taken to a hospital. Round Rock police say it was later determined all the devices were found were not a threat. And federal law enforcement officers are facing a real and imminent threat. That's according to the head of the FBI Agents Association. In an interview, Special Agent Brian O'Hare urged the country's political leaders to immediately and publicly denounce recent attacks on the agency. The FBI says they have been looking into an unprecedented number of threats to bureau personnel and property. The threats started after they searched the Florida resort of former President Donald Trump earlier this month. O'Hare says the attacks are making it difficult for them to accomplish their mission of protecting the American people. 